is a Saturday morning, a gorgeous day, a gorgeous weekend for the 4th of July in Jackson and West Tennessee. Welcome in. This is Tricks of the Trade, and here's your honeydew helper, John Allen. Hey, man, what is, what's going on with you this morning? Well, I tell you, it's just, it is nice out there. It's not oh, yeah. too hot yeah. yet. Yeah. Well, it's only going to be like 81, 82 today, and we got winds coming out of the north, according to Eddie Holmes. Oh, so we're going to be it's going to be a cool couple of days, man. It's going to be great for sitting out under your new pavilion or uh, me. I'll be out under the uh, the John H. Allen Memorial uh, patio uh, cooking some stuff this afternoon. It's not a memorial. Well, no, it's an honorary. I ain't patio. dead yet. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's like when people ask you if you if you lived here all your life. The answer, of course, is no, not that's yet. yet. <laughs> Uh, it's good to everybody in this morning. The uh, Victory Honda text line is open. We want to hear from you this morning. 731-410-7560. If the subjects we're talking about don't fit what you need to know, hey, just text us another question. We're flexible. That's right. We can do yeah. that. If you want to talk directly to John, it's 731-891-6161. And we are out there on the stream right now at y'all.com. Take the apostrophe out, Y-A-L-L dot C-O-M. That's why I wore my flag shirt today. That's uh, a pretty nice looking shirt there, Jim. I, had I like three, that. Had three people try to run me up the pole already. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good pole. That's a first be a stout pole. <laughs> <Yeah>. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> oh, what do you talk about today? What's on your mind? Man, I, I haven't got a clue since you brought it up. You know, here it is, 4th of July. Half uh-huh. the year is shot. Isn't it though? Oh, Christmas man. is right around the corner, I hope. Or, yeah. You know, cooler yeah. weather, even though today is going to be nice. Yep. But uh, it is a day to get out and, uh, you know, fly that flag. Yes, be sir. proud of it. Yes, sir. Just be glad of what you got. And it would be awful easy for me to go off on a tangent this morning on some of these people that have no respect for the flag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Olympic people, for the, one. The yeah. Olympic people and or anybody else. I don't care who you are. If uh, you ought to step, you know, step cross the ocean a little bit and go yeah. into some of these other places yeah, try that and you come back and kiss the ground yep. you know real quick we have our problems there's no two ways about that but it's so much better problems and all than anywhere else in this world has mm-hmm. been since july 4th 1776 when they told the king to we don't need you anymore buddy boy that's right we, we can handle it <laughs> And handle it, we will. We'll do it. We'll be all right. We're going to come out of this. We just got a little pain to go through. Well, anything worth having is a little painful sometimes, that's you know. It so is, that, that's good. Is. But get out and fly that flag. If you hadn't uh, hadn't got you a flagpole, go get you one. Yeah. The the big box stores are open. Uh, Ace Hardware is open. Uh, uh, go down and, you know, get you a post hole digger and a bag of Sack Creek. Yep. And uh, put your flag up. Yeah, and, or just and screw it on the wall like a lot of people do. That's yeah, yeah, st- a little is, standard, yeah. put it on the wall, yeah. just any way you want to do it, but but get out there and fly that flag. Right. And uh, hope everybody does have a safe weekend. Don't do anything stupid and have to spend it in an undesirable location, <laughs> whether that be a, a, a hospital that's or right. a, a jail cell. That's right. That's, they used to call it the Gray Bar Hotel. The Gray Bar <laughs> Hotel, that's right. Don't want to do that. Yeah. Now, lots and lots of fireworks and celebrations all over West Tennessee. The biggie's out at the airport here in Jackson. That's tomorrow, I believe, from about 4 o'clock to 9 o'clock, the Firefighters Freedom Festival. I was wondering where the big fireworks were display was going to be that's this way and yeah. that's it yeah. all yeah. right well, they're well, going to have they're going to have music uh, out there they got uh, food trucks they got all the uh, you know games for the kids and all that kind of stuff start uh, starting at four o'clock and then the fireworks will be down around dusk around nine o'clock or so and that uh, that will be the biggie of course there's another biggie over in lexington the festival of the lakes they say that lexington's population doubles on this one day every year really yeah people coming in to see the fireworks at beach lake yeah you know i've never done that I haven't either. I need to do that. I, uh, you know, I, I, I used to uh, trek down to the fairgrounds in my earlier years, yeah. you know, and, oh, and yeah. set over where the where the road goes over the the railroad track right uh-huh. there. You'd park your car on the side. Yeah, right above the bread bread uh, factory. Yeah, yeah, colonial bread factory yeah. down there, yeah. and uh, that's where the big fireworks were. Yes, sir. You know, uh, dad, daddy kind of shied a little way away from fireworks because it reminded him of rifle fire and yeah. World War Two and yeah. all that good stuff. But we got to go down there and and uh, watch the fireworks and uh, 
Yep. See the big stuff go I miss, off. I missed the one at the ballpark because you could go see a good ball game when the generals were playing well and go out there and, and not have to leave your seat. And then you kind of got comfortable right there. That was some of the best fireworks I've ever seen. Yeah, they were good. They were good. I wonder if Scott's having them in his backyard because of that. I don't think so. Don't think so? Okay. Well, anyway, I just it, worth a try. <laughs> Light a sparkler or yeah, do something, right. you know. Yeah, ex- exactly. exactly. Oh, well, our lines are all open this yes, morning, they are. and the yes, text they are. lines are open. And if you don't like what I'm saying, uh, pick a subject, any subject, and we'll get what you want to talk about on right yeah. away. And uh, I'll tell you what, let's do since uh, since we've got we've got uh, about 54 more minutes. You know, we've got a whole hour to do this. But let's let's start out by reminding everybody that uh, this show is sponsored by three great sponsors out uh, quality outdoor products, West 10 Fence Company and uh, uh, Stormy out at Economy Siding and Windows. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, let's just throw them up in there and pick one. How about West 10 Fence Company? Well, I'll tell you what, I've seen a lot of remnants of their business on the side of the roads here lately. With the winds and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, and, oh, yeah. And, the, and where the old ones have been tore down. Mm-hmm. Now, there, now there is where uh, you, you separate the men from the boys because some of those others leave it piled up on the side of the road. Yeah, they'll take it with them. But they'll take it with them. <laughs> That's true. And uh, do a great job. Did, did a little job for me this past week. Uh, had a truck that I guess he didn't have a rear view mirror. And he commenced to backing up to unload some furniture and forgot there was a nice fence wonderful, right there. Wonderful, wonderful. And he put a hole where there wasn't supposed to be. And uh, we made a phone call. Here they come. They tempted it in to where, you know, the boogers and the hanks couldn't get in or out <laughs> and, uh, and 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 made things kind of safe for the next day or two while yep. they ordered those fence panels, got them in, and it looked like it looks like it grew there. I yeah. can't tell it's even been patched. Yeah, that's that's what you want, you know, quick service and good uh, good results. That's right. And, and you know, they, uh, they're so good, the crews come out, and uh, they get right to it. They don't have to sit down and drink a couple of cokes or pepsis and then throw the wrappers down like a lot of other people will do they yep. they uh they they get the job done get in and get out and you don't know they've been there so i, I do i recommend them because i use them yep. and uh if you want a good fence around around your house no matter what kind of fence it is give the folks at uh, west 10 fence company a call i think you'll be happy with what you get you will be 731-668-5959 if you dial them up or you can go online. Uh, Ricky Pennington in the sales department is the man. R. Pennington one, the number one at yahoo.com. That is one of our three sponsors, West 10 Defense Company. And we've got the uh, Victory Honda text line firing up already. Let's see here. What we got over there? Uh, Mr. Allen, this is threshold sealant. And then it says okay with a question mark. It's got a picture of it here. You may need to do what you did Thursday. Walk around here and look at this. Well, no, I can. I think I can. I think I can read it to you. Let me get the. He's got a photograph of it here. I think this is. This may be the same caller that was had the threshold problem. We yeah, talked we about talked Thursday. about Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, made by Sacrete. It's called hydraulic cement leak stopper. That's it. That's it. And it's it's gray color. Ten pound ten pound bucket there. Yeah. It. Uh, you can put that in. It'll stay put. You know, a lot of these, you know, people are quick to pick up these sealants uh, or mortar, especially. They'll mix it up and they'll pour it in a crack, a big crack, thinking uh-huh. they're going to fill it up. And then when it dries, it draws up, and pulls away from the side. Water runs right through it. Yeah. And then it starts cracking. And then you reach down there, think, next thing you know, and you take your finger and just pop it out. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, that hydraulic cement is really good, and it gets a little pricey, but it's some good stuff. Use it sparingly now because it sets up real fast. And uh, so mix you a little dab up, pour it in there about the consistency of pancake batter. Right. I hadn't had any pancakes in a while thinking of that as I digress. <laughs> and they haven't gotten any fired up in here. That's right. We're not cooking either. over here this morning. What's wrong with this world? Uh, yeah. uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, that, that's some good stuff. So you're on the right track. Just keep on going and send us a picture of the finished product when you get done. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Texter. Thanks for being with us uh, today. He says uh, six bucks what it costs for the whole for ten pounds worth yeah that's not bad that's not too bad six bucks in a little time that's all that's right yeah good deal that's good thanks for listening texture and thanks for uh sharing that with us and let it yeah let us know how it comes out we appreciate that all right now jim a little quiz here yes 
today is or or this weekend everybody's having picnics yes I had, you know. I had a partial one last night did you yeah I, I i grilled some salmon did some cedar plank salmon last night mm. and topped it off with some peaches and cream grilled corn oh oh that corn was so good i, I bet mean a little nibbles. i mean they'd squirt halfway across the room if you got them at the right angle that's right put your eye out <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, I, I bet Julie had to wear goggles uh, over there. Corn, corn and, and BB guns. You can put an eye over that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it was, uh, it was good. It was good. A little, little farmer's market corn goes a long way. Well, you know, it, it's that time of the year. And uh, I got some the other day, and it was really good, too. I had it on the grill, and, and, uh, and then sometimes I'll do it on the grill, sometimes I'll do it wrap it up in saran wrap throw it in the microwave right. and, and and it it stays nice and tender and juicy oh, yeah. and all that stuff but anyway always have a lot of mess with your picnics yes and and you know they have trained us without us knowing they have trained us to put plastic bags in our garbage cans yes i know now you know i i remember when we didn't have plastic bags but and then once a month you'd have to go out there and shake a little comet in the bottom of your aluminum yeah, uh, garbage, garbage can yes, and put you two or three inches of water in there and scrub it out and pour it out because it stank to high heaven. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. but you know you you put here you go you're putting this plastic bag inside of your plastic garbage can. And you get it full because company's been over there. And, you know, you hadn't seen uh, Homer and Jethro and Cooter and Bobby Joe and all them in a long time. True. And your you trash can is overflowing. Right. So now you got to pull it out. Mm-hmm. And you got a little what they call a vacuum set up yes. right there. The next yeah. thing you know, you're pulling the ring off the top of your plastic garbage can. <laughs> uh, you know, you're cinching yeah, up them yeah, little yeah, drawstrings. Yeah, your draw, t- your draw tie. And then you... And you, and you're trying to pull it up because, and you can't get it up because you bought the cheap bags that doesn't have the little netting in it, you know, that <laughs> reinforces everything. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna tell you how to keep that from happening. And all you need is you can get a drill, or you can actually get a, but, a butcher knife if you want to. Okay. And and drill you a hole about six inches up from the bottom of your garbage can, in the side of the garbage can the outside garbage can not the bag the can and that'll let air come in it'll relieve that vacuum so you can pull your plastic garbage bags right out without any trouble now don't put them in the bottom of the can because if you have a leak things will come out on your floor and get on your new patio and all that stuff now if you don't have a drill you can punch a hole in the side of the can with a butcher knife Make you a plus sign. Jab it in one way and then turn around and, and hit it the other way. Yeah. It'll still suck a little air in there, but that might uh, save you from having a mess by your bag busting True. there on you hey, in your picnic idea. pavilion. Yeah. So That happens a lot. Yeah. Well, it is. Ain't nothing more aggravating than pulling up your drawstring and you realize all you got in your hand is your drawstring. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, so uh, man, you know, man, keep man. that in mind. Speaking, and, of, speaking of garbage cans and garbage bags, uh, if you live in the city of Jackson, we're about to go through a uh, a very traumatic garbage change here. We're going to be, it's the first time I can think in my entire life where I won't own my own garbage can. That's true. Yeah. And it'll be for the first time in my life, and I'm still revolting, <laughs> got to roll your can to the front. My driveway is 300 foot long. I know. And I ain't seen my wife roll a garbage can in her life. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get your camera out for uh, first trips. <laughs> no, I got a feeling I'll be doing it, but that's a long haul. Yeah. And yet, right now, the guy in a little pickup truck runs down there two days a week, and he'll pick up the bags and the bags only yeah and put them in his truck and if anything got loose in the can it stays it, in the it can. stays in the can yeah. yet he has this is a commercial can with the reinforcement on it to where they hook it on the back of the truck yeah. and they just kind of yeah, tilt, tilt it, it over in there, yeah. yeah yeah now what happened to the big old boys that 
just threw that big old can up on the shoulder and walked a half a mile to get to the truck like the new contract. New contract. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. I saw some ladies doing that the other oh, yeah. day. Yeah, I've and seen that. And that's great. Yeah. 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 yeah, when you were a kid, you ever have the uh, the uh, the uh, wish when you grew up to be a ride shotgun on a garbage truck? Yeah, would that be fun? <laughs> Hang on the back like that. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, you, 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 you couldn't get on the fire truck with a little Dalmatian. And the Dalmatian couldn't get one of them to hang on the back of a garbage <laughs> truck. True. They're smarter than that. <laughs> They're smarter than that. But, yeah, you know, nice breezy little job. Of course, you need it yep. to be breezy because it's kind of rank running in behind that thing. Yeah, it can be. It can be. Now, here, here's the question, and you may you may know the answer to that. I call myself reading all of the stuff on this new garbage switchover, which is, we're going to be getting the new cans out this month, I understand. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and the, these cans are like, I think they're 90 to 96-gallon cans, and I believe they're like the ones you're talking about. They've got the hook on them or the, or the little bar on there, so yeah. they can roll them to the street, hook them on, and they dump themselves basically yeah. into the truck, which is cool. I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm not, I'm not griping about it, you know, because my driveway's not 300 feet long either. It's only about 30 feet. But anyway, what do you do with your old garbage cans? Mine are rotted out anyway, so I, I've been needing to buy new ones, but I knew there was going to be a change coming, so I didn't. So what do you do with those old ones? You can't put them in the new can, and will they pick them up if you don't put them in the can? <laughs> exactly. I was fixing to tell you, you'll have to put them in a bag. Probably. You'll have to cut them up and put them in a bag <laughs> <laughs> and, and hide them. Pull that drawstring tight. Yep. And uh, it's just, the other day, I had a lady ask me, she says, can I put this old paint I got in my garage in the garbage? And I said, probably not. They won't pick it up. <laughs> yep. She says, well, where do I take it? I says, well, I'll give you my answer, but I'm not supposed to tell it like this, but I'll tell you what you can do. Yep. She says, well, I, don't, I can't go to a special disposal site. I said, yeah, it's kind of pricey. I know that, you know, they have those spots where they pick up your old paint oh, yeah. and cans and oh, yeah. computers and all that stuff. I said, you got a piece of plastic? Well, yeah, I got some plastic. I said, roll it out there in the driveway and then go get that paint and open the cans and just pour it on the plastic. What's left of it, yeah. Just pour it all out there. Let it just, just get fancy with it swirl it all up make you we could call that art if we you could, want to yeah but just pour it out there on top of that plastic and then she looked at me so funny and she said and then what i said well you can watch paint dry let it dry and then just wad that plastic up throw it in your garbage Put can hey nobody say anything <laughs> there you go there you go i don't i don't know what the rule is on that i, I for some reason i think yes you can throw away latex paint but you can't throw away oil based paint in yeah. the garbage I, I, that's i may be totally wrong about that well uh, uh, they don't i don't think they want to take the chance of anything so they yeah. don't want you to throw any kind of cans in there. oh that's true yeah that's but true. I, you know i don't know but you know when in doubt pour it out there so. you go. <laughs> Hey, I like it. I like it. I'll make a slogan out of that. Textures, so. if you know, or textures or phone callers, either one. If you know, how do we get rid of our old garbage cans once we get our new ones? Because uh, mine are beat up so bad, I have no no need to keep them. So yeah, let, well. let us know if, if you know. The texter, uh, texter that uh, we, we were talking about, the sealant just a moment ago, yeah. he had also called previously about a faucet problem he had. Yeah. And he says, one more thing. I solved the faucet sprayer problem. Oh. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I slammed it, and it works. A steady stream. Uh, the filter is made for problems. So you got it working anyway. So in fact, he sent us a picture of, of that very, very sprinkler head there. You know, yeah. sometimes projects just need what I call an attitude adjustment. Uh -huh. you know, just, just slapping them once on the counter or, or popping them on the side or... Yeah. Will make a lot of things work. Takes you back to that old Andy Griffith thing when he spit in the back of the radio to make it work. Remember that? No, I missed that no one. No Time for Sergeants, I believe, was the name of the name <laughs> of the movie. We couldn't get the, the radio to work, so he just spit in it. You know, and he said, hello, and it worked fine. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Texter. Appreciate that. We're going to take a quick break, about two and a half minutes. We'll be right back. This is the Tricks of the Trade on an Independence Day weekend Saturday. Stay tuned for a very special message from Dustin Ring. Hey, Jackson and West Tennessee. This is Dustin, and I buy houses for cash. 
and I want to buy more. I also work with over 700 cash investors that also buy houses. The best part is we buy them in as-is condition so you don't have to fix a thing. We will even pay for your closing cost, and we can also close in as little as seven days. We buy vacant houses, rented houses, fixer-upper houses, houses that have caught on fire, foreclosing houses, leftover divorce houses. Are you relocating for your job? Or are you a tired landlord tired of dealing with problem tenants? We'll buy those houses too. And hey, no matter what the reason is, I'm here to help. Call Dustin Ring at 731-549-5480. Again, that's 731-549-5480. Again, this is Dustin Ring, and I buy houses for cash. Call me today or text me, 731-549-5480. Attention! Do you owe back taxes, fines, and penalties to the IRS? The IRS now offers new relief options for taxpayers affected by COVID-19, but you can't go it alone. Call Tax Solutions now. Our team of former IRS agents and tax professionals can get you the best deal. We know the COVID-19 rules. Call us and never speak to the IRS again. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions now and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. The virus has caused the IRS to take extensive action to help taxpayers. So if you owe $10,000 or more, this is the best time in years to settle your tax debt. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. Remember, the IRS will not give up until you pay. Call 800-383-8177. Hey guys, this is Mark here from Jackson Off-Road right here in Jackson, Tennessee. Let me tell you a little bit about what we got going on here. Jeep and auto accessories, weather tech gear, step bars, bed covers, bed lining, lights, offering anything vehicle related, big or small, come see us guys. Hires, tires are big right now. We're doing discounts on tires, we're doing discounts on hitches. If you're in the market for towing accessories for your campers, come see us. Fifth wheels, goosenecks, bumper hitches, wiring, we got you. Look for the monster truck, Jackson Off-Road, right off 45 bypass, 668 80 84. Caution. Listening to this radio station may make you hungry. Good thing we're broadcasting from the Dixie Cafe, WTJS 93.1 FM for West Tennessee. I hope they're there. Saturday morning in Jackson and West Tennessee. Beautiful day out there. Great weekend for the 4th of July. It's Independence Day. 244 years ago, they got it right. Yeah. Yeah. Took them a while. Now, there's some out there now that think it never was, but what do they know? They don't know nothing. That's right. Their in, their entitlement is, is a little warped. Is, yeah. <laughs> Ain't that the yeah. truth? Ain't that the truth? John Allen's Tricks of the Trades, the name of the show, 891-6161. Put you right in the phone bank. You can talk directly to John with your questions or comments. Victory Honda text line, 731-410-7560. If you'd like to watch us make the sausage this morning, Y'all.com. Leave out the apostrophe. Y-A-L-L dot C-O-M. That'll put you right there. You can see it. You can hear it. You'll know what's happening. You know, one little thing I want to talk about this morning is is a lot of people are using uh, ceramic tile now. Yeah. And uh, for reasons that I could probably talk about all day long, but I won't, you get a cracked tile every now and then. And... If you were lucky enough to have saved some tile for when you put your floor down, uh-huh. you'll have some to patch with. So you gotta you might want to, you know, replace one tile that might have come loose, or it may be broke, or whatever your situation may be. And you know that it's not as easy as it looks to replace a piece of tile. No. So you know, I thought I might give people a little pointer or two this morning on on doing that. And uh, these little Side uh, side grinders that you can buy in the store that got a little four inch wheel on them. Mm-hmm. You can put an abrasive bit in those, and they are great for cutting through grout to get the four sides of your tile free. Yeah. And then you can get a screwdriver. Doesn't take anything fancy or anything like that. Small pry bar, and you can get down in the grout line and pop up that piece of tile that's bad now if you're prying on it you got to be real careful and don't be prying too hard against the piece of tile beside that one because or you'll be breaking another piece of tile right 
and it could go on and on. But uh, get it up. But you get that piece of tile up, and then take a look at the tile. And uh, if you look at the back side of it, if there's no mastic on it or mortar on it, it probably wasn't buttered properly when they put it down. Now, with a with a, with a tile, uh, tile, you have to use a notched trial. Yeah. You know, and because you don't want to spread out that mastic evenly, it's got to have those little ribs in it. Right. You know that because if it doesn't do it, it's not going to stick. And you got to have the right kind of trial with the right kind of notches in it. Right. So when you dig all that old mastic up because otherwise your tile will ride too high and stick up above your floor. Yep. So get your old mastic up and then get you the right kind of trial and put some more down on the floor and then take it and put some on the back of your tile. That's called buttering your tile. And you get that notch on there and then set it in place and kind of when you push it down, Kind of wiggle it just a little bit to kind of get it to set real good. Right. Make sure you're at the right level, and then let it set up. Now, some people have a tendency to want to jump over there and get the grout and start grouting it in. Can't do that. you got to wait for it to get dry first where the tile is set. Okay. And then when you set that tile, then you go back home to the next day and grout around it, making sure you got the right color grout. Um and then some people, after they grout it in, like if it's on a floor or something, you may want to seal it so that dirt's not attracted to that new grout right. and it changes colors and all that. So you can you can patch your own tile if you need to. Uh, I always tell people, though, if, if you got a cracked tile and the floor under it is cracked, put you down a little fiberglass tape first. If you put a crack on a crack, it's going to crack again. Yeah, well, that makes so, sense. But, and yeah, that and makes it will. Sense. Yeah. So uh, just kind of make sure your substrate, your your surface you're sticking to is, is good and clean and solid, and you'll be pretty good at doing that. So I'm talking about grout for a ceramic tile. Now, there there is such a thing, and you said wait and then seal it later on so it doesn't get dirty as bad. There is such a thing, I think, uh, where the sealant is included in, with the grout, you just That's put right. the grout in. There's got That's to be right. in. Is that is that a good product? Oh yes, it's great. Good, good okay. stuff. Put that in there. And if you uh, and if you need to seal it, you can buy it in pins and and like a magic marker uh-huh. yeah. and put it in there as well. So you know, lots of ways to do it. Just do it right. You won't have to be going back and scraping the black ugly stuff off of it where it molds or mildews. Like right. if it's around a tub shower or something like that. So. I tell you, we did this, uh, oh, watch, it's been a year or so ago now. And like, like anybody else, when you use something, uh, and especially in wet areas, like a bathroom, uh, tile is going to get dirty. It just does. I don't care how good a housekeeper you are, it's going to mm-hmm. get dirty, and the grout's going to get dirty also. We had a uh, gentleman come over, and uh, he is a carpet cleaner, and he steam cleaned oh, yeah. all of our ceramic tile, and I'm telling you, man, it is looked brand new steam does a great job oh, yeah i was a little hesitant i was afraid it might break the break the grout out of it you know you know mess up but i'm telling you it looked great and still does even a year later mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's a it's a great way to clean tile and and uh used to soften it up with what was actually a closed steamer yeah it was just a gallon jug of water on a little roll around stand that had a hose on it right and a wand like you you know run it over your drawers to get them get, get them going <laughs> get your wrinkles out of them yeah get your wrinkles out yep. but you could soften it up and then scrub behind it and it cleans it real good yeah but little little pressure does even better so yeah wonder if you could use that wand get the wrinkles out of yourself <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I doubt it. Wrinkles will still be there, but at least they'd be clean, right? <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> tricks, right. Tricks of the trade on a Saturday morning on 93.1. John Allen is your host, 731-891-6161. Victory Honda text line, 410-7560. Check us out on y'all.com. We want to hear from you this morning. We've had a couple of uh, excellent texts, and we need some more, so bring them on it's about halfway through the proceedings this morning so we got plenty of time to talk to you mm. yeah. you know this weekend i i don't know why I, it just 
I look back on some notes I had of previous shows, and it just seems like every year at this time, people were doing the same things. Yeah. And and it gets into floor covering a little bit, you know, new carpet or whatever. And it never fails that one of the things you don't think about if you change the style of your flooring, maybe go from carpet to a hardwood or vice versa or whatever, you got to cut your doors off. Yeah. And most floor people won't cut your doors off. It kind of baffles them, and I don't understand that. But anyway, <laughs> it uh, you have to get a carpenter to yeah. come out there and cut your door off. Well, I know the real reason they don't want to do it is because they don't want to take a chance of splintering the door. Yes. Believe it or not, there's a there's an art to cutting the door off. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm going to give you a little tip on how to do that because there are some handy people out there that want to do it themselves. And and I've, I've cut a lot of doors off, and I've learned the hard way. But there are some crazy things that happen sometimes when you cut the door off for those that are kind of novices and yeah. hadn't done it very often. Uh-huh. So here you go. Let's say... You decided to put in a, uh, a thick, napped carpet that had a real heavy, dense pad under it. Used to happen a whole lot when everybody used to go to the shag carpet like we had in the uh, 70s yeah. and the 60s. <laughs> you know, you couldn't open or close your door. So uh, <laughs> you took a, the floor guy, he would take them off the hinges, and yeah. he'd put your door over he'd lean it up against the wall yeah and he'd say now you need to get your carpenter to come over here and fix this so here comes the carpenter and he goes and he measures to see exactly how much of a crack you want under the door right and as a general rule of thumb you want about three quarters of an inch because not only do you want it to clear your floor covering that room's got to breathe not everybody has a return air uh, in every room of their home. So it's pulling air. The air that you're pumping into that room, it's got to be able to be pulled back through, and it comes through the bottom of your door. So here, here you go. You decide, you measure your opening, and you decide you want to cut it off about three-quarters of an inch or whatever. So he goes over to the wall, and he picks up the door, and he very carefully takes it outside. Mm-hmm. And puts it on his sawhorse, yes. which he has covered with a fabric or a piece of old pad because he don't want to scratch the door. There you go. And he goes and he does everything he needs to do to cut that door off and cuts it off. And he brings it back inside after he has taken a rag and <laughs> cleaned it. And he's gotten, <laughs> he's gotten all the dust off of it. And he goes... And he puts it on the door, hangs the door, Mm -hmm. snaps the pin in it, closes the door, and then he gets that feeling in his stomach (laughs) that you have when you see the highway patrol in your rear view here. (laughs) Because what had happened when the floor guy took the door down for reasons who knows why, he turned it upside (laughs) down and leaned it up against the wall. Here comes the carpenter. He grabs the door, oh, puts it out there on his bench, and cuts off the wrong cuts end. The top off. <laughs> <laughs> that could get expensive. That could get expensive. Now, I have gone into houses, I kid you not, Jim, where we'll go in there and we'll find that piece that he cut off the bottom nailed back on the top of the door. Really? And they took they took little... Uh, uh, caulking, yeah. and they try real hard to smooth out where they cut it and paint the door paint back. It, oh, it happens Lord. all the time. Paint can hide a lot of sins, can it? Yeah. So the first thing I tell people when they're getting ready to cut the doors off is make sure you got the right <laughs> end you're cutting off of it. Oh, that's that's the same guy that used to that used to be on a crew that the boss would tell him green side up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of my favorite shows I used to watch was The Carpenter with the Stooges. You remember that? Oh, yeah. And uh, and uh, uh, Curly's over there. He's, he's putting the siding on the house and about every other nail he threw it over his shoulder. <laughs> and 
And Mo comes over and says, what are you doing? You're wasting all those nails. And he says, no, I'm not. They're defective. The heads are on the wrong end. And Mo says, well, you idiot, they're for the other side of the house. That's right, the other wall. <laughs> So anyway, oh, Lord. after you've determined the right side of the door, the, the, the bottom of the door to cut off, right. then, then you have to measure. And as when you're doing, Murphy's Law always kicks in when you're working on something real nice, like a, maybe a, a beautifully stained door. Uh -huh. M measure twice. Yeah, cut once. Yeah, cut mm -hmm. once. Mm -hmm. But when you, get it, when you get, get it marked where you want it, you take your level or whatever kind of straight edge you got and mark your door and then now some people will use a utility knife mm -hmm. and cut the door yeah. others will use just a scratch all some people that know what they're doing will use a 16 penny nail sure and just drag it across there the idea is to cut that top layer of that door just scratch it real good by doing that and then if you know what to do with your skill saw and cut on the right side of the line, the, cut on the side that you're cutting off, yeah. and if you just don't cross that scratch mark, it will not splinter up. And splinters get nasty. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you use a scratch all on it and you're cutting on the cut side of the line and get you a good straight cut, you won't have the first splinter. When you get it all cut off the way you want it, then take a piece of sandpaper or a, a file, a rasp, whatever you might have, and gently just kind of scratch the edge of the door that you've cut off at a 45-degree angle to get that sharp edge off, and it kind of bevels down. Sure. Just barely drag it across there, and then you can wipe it off. Now, here's the most important thing about cutting off a door that people forget to do they'll cut that door off and then go hang it and forget about it and if it's an outside door you're going to pay for that one in the long run because you've got to seal the bottom edge of that door yep. otherwise especially if it's a panel door next thing you know those panels are splitting the doors swelling uh, it don't fit like it want to except maybe one month out of the year when the humidity goes way down right Otherwise, it'll stick and twist and warp, and all kinds of things will go wrong with that door. Oh, yeah. So seal the bottom edge of the door. First job I ever had back in the 70s, I worked for a, a wonderful man called Mike Glenn. Yeah, remember One of the well. premier contractors in this town. Yep. I never will forget, Mike would come out on the job and, and daily and to inspect things and make sure things were doing right. Sure. And he would... It was he was notorious for inspecting his painters. He had a little little mirror in his pocket, one of those little telescoping mirrors. Mm -hmm. He'd pull that thing out, stretch it out so he could see the top and the bottom edge of a door to make sure his painters sealed it. Exactly. And if he didn't yep. or that person didn't, they they got fussed at. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh my my dad was the same way because he was in the lending business and saving loan business there for a while mm -hmm. back in the early 70s. And we'd go out to do appraisals on houses and, and that sort of stuff back then. And that was one of the first things he would do when he'd walk into a house. He'd start feeling with his hands the top of the door. That's right. And if they weren't painted, he was going to say something to that, that painter or that builder or whatever. That's right. Yeah, it's absolutely. just the way you did it. Yep, absolutely. But I guarantee you right now, you go into new houses. Yep. 95% of them are raw as they can be on oh, the top yeah. and bottom edge. Absolutely. And he, he would also check, uh, look at the at the framing. You know, if it was a little wampy jawed on there, he'd make, a, he'd make a note out of that and talk to them about that, too. I remember him telling me one time, he said, I don't know what's wrong with these boys. He said, they they finish in this house with a hewing axe. <laughs> <laughs> you you yeah. know, speaking of that and framing, because I had this called on one of my projects. Uh, you can't just bore a hole in your framing or cut a notch in your rafters mm -hmm. or your ceiling joists like you used to. Yep. We got these codes now that if you cut one, you got to prove that it will still hold up the weight that it's designed for. 
How do you you got to prove it. How do you do that? Well, they got a table for that, of all things. Jeez. Oh, and I bo- I, I'm going to tell on myself right now. I bored a seven-eighths inch hole in a truss yeah. this past week. Yeah. Because we were going to run a pipe through it. And, and I got fussed at. And I had to get a letter from an engineer to say that it was still hold the load. Yeah. To which I said, what load? It's not a bearing wall. I don't care. Yeah. It's a hole. It's not supposed to be there. And I says, well, I'm going to nail a two before on the side of it and be done with it. He says, well, you got to get the engineer to say that's okay. Oh, God. You know, when I got my letter back, it came back. You know what the engineer told me I had to do? No. Nothing. Nothing. He Maybe said that wasn't a big enough hole to uh, impair the structural integrity of the cord of the truss. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> See, all you need to know is the, the words and the little letters after your name, and you can tell them anything, and they're happy. That's right. All they need is something to go in their file. Yeah. yeah. That, that, well, that's exactly what he said. I just got to have it from my file. Exactly. And, I mean, he's got a job to do, sure. and I'm not fussing at him. That's just the way we've gotten yeah. with codes yeah. right now. Yeah. It's gotten common sense is gone. Oh, it's in, in every, if you can't in prove every, it, it doesn't happen. In every way. Mm-hmm. In every way. You're listening to Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday morning. John Allen, the host. We're going to take about 90 seconds out for a commercial break. And we'll be right back. Stay with us. At XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, we manage your printing so you can focus on what matters most to your business. XMC and Xerox now offer managed print services to help businesses keep track of what they're spending on printing and manage their resources to maximize their office equipment. The average employee prints over $500 worth of documents each year. With an organization of 30, that is over $15,000 annually. Let us show you how you can save thousands by contacting us or visiting our website at xmcinc.com. Polish salons are more than just ordinary nail salons. They have a place where you can come and escape from your everyday stress and busy lifestyle. Polish prides themselves in providing their customers with fabulously indulgent nail care while maintaining the highest level of cleanliness and sterilization. Come and relax and be pampered with genuine care and with eight wine options to choose from. Join them for a new polished experience at Polish Thompson Farms on University Drive, 731-736-4599 or visit us at polishjackson.com. This is Tammy Reed with Hickman Realty. Homes are selling as fast as they hit the market. So if you've been thinking about selling your home, now is the time. Don't trust your largest investment to just anyone. Put it in the hands of the most experienced agents in the business. You need a realtor to make sure you are getting the absolute most for your home. The market is changing so fast. Don't leave money laying on the table. Call me today and let's do a free market analysis on your home. Call Tammy Reed, 616-6000 or 664-1006. During these difficult times, we understand how important it is to stay healthy and safe. With so many of us confined to our homes and not being able to work, we feel the financial burden more than ever. Many folks lost their jobs and businesses. Others were furloughed and some are working from home at reduced pay. Keeping up with your bills is not easy under these circumstances. If you have credit card debt and cannot keep up with your monthly payments, we at Debt Fix Pros are here to help. Give us a call to see how we can reduce your interest rates and lower your monthly payments. Protect your credit and let us help you find a solution that fits your needs. We, your friends at Debt Fix Pros, are here to help. Let us take care of your credit card debt so you can focus on what is really important. Call for a free phone consultation at 1-800-683-9577. 1-800-683-9577. Representatives are standing by to assist you. 1-800-683-9577. 1-800-683-9577. Caution, listening to this radio station may make you hungry. Good thing we're broadcasting from the Dixie Cafe, WTJS 93.1 FM for West Tennessee. It is Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday morning. Beautiful Independence Day weekend in the progress. John Allen, the host, 731-891-6161. That's our phone line. We'd love to talk to you this morning. Victory Honda text line, 731-410-7560. Out in the stream, look for us at y'all, Y-A-L-L, no apostrophe, dot com, and it's all-girl orchestra. Hmm. There you go. Got a little something's going to happen today, Jim. Okay. I'm I'm. I'm going to a uh, family reunion. Ah, okay. 
on my mother's side. Okay. Now, I don't know how many of them they're going to let out on bail this week. <laughs> <laughs> so the crowd size is iffy. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's a little <laughs> iffy. But, uh, but there, there's two things that's going to happen that I know is going to happen. Okay. And I'm not making this up. Number one, sometime before sundown, somebody's going to catch a June bug. Yeah. And it's the older folks to tell some of these younger fun- folks how they used to have fun. Yeah. You know, and it'd be a piece of thread, and they'd catch a June bug, and they'd tie that thread onto a, the leg of the June bug, mm-hmm. and pull it out about four or five foot, yeah, and start spinning it, <laughs> and that June bug's flying around in a circle. Yeah. Now some people think that's cruel. I've never heard a June bug complain. <laughs> Neither. I've seen a couple of them limp away. <laughs> But yeah, that you know that was some entertainment you had. <laughs> it was man. Now the other thing has to do with eating. Yeah. And we're gonna have trouble this year. Uh oh. Cause th- there's gonna be trouble. I mean, somebody could get cut over this. Oh but, no. But what I love better than anything this time of the year is a real homemade coconut cake oh don't let my daughter hear that she'll be chasing you oh i love a coconut cake nice and moist yeah, seven man. minute icing on the top of it yep. fresh coconut on the top Ooh. and th- it's real moist i mean when you cut it just kind of something oozes out of it on there your you plate go. there yeah well <clears throat> i went to my favorite grocery store the other day uh-huh. because i needed a little coconut juice and I've spoiled like the rest of them. I I used to take and break the co- the real coconuts. Yeah. Break them up and put them in a grinder like you do sausage. Sure. And make your own coconut. But I've I've gone the cheap route. I've or the less labor intensive route. I'll yeah. put it that way. And I and I buy the coconut in the back. But every now and then I need a little juice. Yeah. Kind of keep things nice and moist. There you go. Well, there seems to be, of all the shortages we've got going on right now, there is a shortage on coconut juice. So I had to ask why. Yeah. You're not (laughs) going to believe the story I was told. If Uh, I'm lying, I'm dying. Here we go again. There is a lawsuit in progress. Yeah. That my favorite grocery store is going along with why i don't know it makes no sense to me but it seems that PETA has gotten involved gotten in the middle of my coconut cake uh, okay yeah and and here's the way the the lawsuit reads and one of these other companies that don't wave our flag yes where they grow these coconuts now i've never seen this i just read about it yeah. i've never seen it but they use trained monkeys to pick up the coconuts. <laughs> okay. I'm not kidding. And these coconuts, these monkeys go out and they grab these coconuts and they bring them back and I guess put them in the truck. Yeah. I, I, whatever they do. Well, apparently somebody in PETA world thinks that they're being abu- abused or overloaded or maybe one of them threw his back out bringing in too many <laughs> Coconuts. I don't know what the occasion is. Yeah, but they're they're claiming cruelty to the monkeys that are picking up the coconuts, and because of that, there's a lawsuit, oh, and because of that, to I guess um, side with the monkeys. <laughs> my, my grocery store has decided not to put coconut juice on the shelf. Uh, monkeys must have a pretty strong lobby. <laughs> yeah, I've, there's Kong's got to be in there somewhere. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> but th- that's true. They're, they're, that is they're, nuts. Th- well, it is nuts. And I don't have any coconut juice. Oh, Lord. So, you know. You know, I wonder if everybody who thought that was crazy just quit shopping there, would they get the point? Of course, you can't get them to do it because we're all creatures of habit, and we're going to go where we go. Yeah, see, I get all bent out of shape when they just rearrange the store. I know. <laughs> I probably couldn't have found the coconuts <laughs> used to be. Uh, but at least you knew not to look. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah. That's my story. That that's is, a true story. That is crazy. That is crazy. 
I'll tell you one thing you won't have a problem with. What's that? We were talking, you were talking about putting up things at the wrong angles and not fastening them down right and all that stuff a few minutes ago. Yeah. If you get Stormy to come out to your house and put some siding on or put in some new windows, it's going to be done right. You know, I'm glad he's one of our sponsors. Me too. And, 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 he, and the reason I'm glad because I use him, and I've, I've made it very clear to management, I yeah. don't hawk anybody that I don't have firsthand knowledge of because right. I don't want to have to hear about it later on. <laughs> True. <laughs> but right now, today, as we speak, they are out on one of my projects on a real fine home and putting some new siding up to match what was there. It yep. matches. Uh, I looked at a brand new house the other day done by another company, and you look down the side of the house and you see the siding droop. Uh-huh. I don't know if he uh, didn't have sense enough to pull a string when he got started or if the whole house kind of droops in the middle or what it is, but it just... It just things like that that catch my eyes yeah. all the time. Yeah. But no, I mean the siding is straight, the cuts are crisp, and just they're right on the mark, and it's trimmed out properly. And around the windows, now we put new windows in that are have the proper ratings on them, which is another uh, bone I got to pick one of these <laughs> days. But anyway, they got nice windows, got the trim on the outside that matches the siding. And it's hermetically sealed. I think he licked his <laughs> finger when he wiped down this caulk joint yeah. because it looks just like the metal. Smooth. It's smooth. Yeah. And maintenance free. <clears throat> All he's got to do is occasionally throw a water hose on the side of the house to clean to clean his house. Right. But uh, we had a little shower day before yesterday. It rained hard. It was a frog strangler yep. where I was, and and uh, and I looked around my windows which we had it all open because I hadn't sheetrocked on the inside. Wasn't it not a drop came through? He had everything taped properly and lapped properly on the outside. No water. Water repelled right off the side of those windows. And when he came back the next day and finished the siding job, it looks good. Yep. And the customer just looked at it and says, i never seen anything like that. And I says, well, that's because he did it. That's so right. I recommend economy siding. Uh, to come out and, and uh, take care of the outside of your house. They can put you in some new windows. They can put you in some new siding, uh, gutters, metal face, all of that to make the outside of your house maintenance free. So uh, give them a call. They're here from Jackson and uh, it's local yep. and do a great job. Yep, 422-3828 or economysiding.com. And give Stormy a call. You'll be glad you did. Uh, We're going to take our last commercial break of the morning. We'll come back and wrap this thing up on Tricks of the Trade. Stay with us. Hey, guys. This is Mark here from Jackson Off-Road right here in Jackson, Tennessee. Let me tell you a little bit about what we got going on here. Jeep and auto accessories, weather tech gear, step bars, bed covers, bed lining, lights, offering anything vehicle related. Big or small, come see us, guys. Hires. Tires are big right now. We're doing discounts on tires. We're doing discounts on hitches. If you're in the market for towing accessories for your campers, Come see us, fifth wheels, goosenecks, bumper hitches, wire, we got you. Look for the monster truck, Jackson Off-Road, right off 45 Bypass, 668-8084. Sakura set the standard in West Tennessee for Japanese sushi rolls and hibachi grill dishes. By popular demand, Sakura added a Chinese menu. For starters, egg drop and hot and sour soup. Entrees include chicken broccoli, sweet and sour chicken, Mongolian beef, and lo mein with your choice of meat. Our Chinese lunch menu starts at just $7.95. Sakura also delivers to your home or business, or you can call ahead for pickup at 664-2878. Sakura's dining area now open and serving at 50% capacity. Sakura on Carriage House Drive. Century 21 Realty, led by John Murray Haltham and Sandra Carter, offers you the most diverse team of experienced real estate agents helping West Tennessee sell their homes quickly for top dollar. Whether you are selling or buying a home, need commercial real estate, or are looking to find the perfect rental, the Century 21 team will assist you with award-winning J.D. Power five-star customer service. Take action now. Call 668-7700 or go to actionrealty.c21.com. Caution, listening to this radio station may make you hungry. Good thing we're broadcasting from the Dixie Cafe, WTJS 93.1 FM for West Tennessee. Tricks of the trade, we have about five minutes left in the show. We need to talk about our, our third sponsor, and we are so blessed to have three great sponsors on this show. Mm-hmm. Quality outdoor products, metal buildings, metal roofing, 
tools to put your metal roofing on your buildings all uh, all the things that you're going to need if you want to do it yourself or they'll help they'll help uh, you find someone to do it if you need that done they turn the right way they got the screws that turn the right way yep. and even cut the holes so you don't have to pre-drill them oh man can't beat that that's right yeah that's, that, right. that's a that's a great place you just it, it's something about that you just need to see somebody do stuff yeah you know, so many places you go into and everything's in a nice little kit or a box or mm-hmm. you know to where you got to go home and open it up and of all things read the instructions yeah, which, are, which instructions. are written in six different languages that's Thank right you, you got to find english <laughs> wave that flag again for yeah, me here Jimmy. We go, baby. uh but uh, that's right but yeah the, you can go out there and watch them make Make it. They, uh, you give them, tell them what you want, tell them how much stuff you got and how big a building you need to put that stuff in, and they will customize you a building to your specifications. It's not one size fits all, yep. or you got to fit uh, you got to fit to their dimensions. They, you tell them what you want, and they will fix it for you. Uh, they'll make it right there. They'll cut the metal. They'll cut all the standards. They'll bend it all for you, get it to where it's ready to just throw in the back of your truck. Yep. And uh, maybe you're just putting on a roof somewhere. Give them all the dimensions. They'll pre-cut everything, load it up for you, bend the metal. It's just amazing to me. Watch a flat piece of metal come off of the shelf, and you slide it in this little machine, and it comes out the other end with all these different kind of ribs on it. Yeah, bent properly too. Bent yeah. properly, and yeah. one laps over the other one, and 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 standing seams roof where you don't even see the fasteners anymore. Exactly. They do all of that and can do it right here in uh, Jackson, Tennessee. We're actually they're in three way. Yep. But uh, you need to go out there and check them out. Uh, they're a little different from other folks that you might find around here they're they're custom and they're there for you and they'll do it the way you want it to do that's it so we'll give them a call quality outdoor products out at three ways john said 888-485-5372 they'd be more than happy to fix you up my next door neighbor has one of those and it's a nice looking building yeah it is absolutely we got about uh, two and a half minutes left in the uh, proceedings today uh, anything else we uh, we need to touch on or just remind everybody what this weekend's all about? It's about us, U.S. That's one time we can brag on us. You better believe it. And uh, and, and thank people. You know, our military that has uh, sacrificed for our independence. Yep. And, uh, you know, wave those flags. You know, even see those flags flying in the cemeteries today and uh, that have extended over from Memorial Day. It, it's just a good day to think about us and it's all right to kind of thump your chest and once a year and and do that and be proud of what we stand for and yep. uh we need some folks up in uh, up in the power pocket up there in dc to stand up for us a little more than they do you know it uh, they're gonna break the neck trying to please everybody they end up doing nothing exactly and uh and then they won't turn around and get reelected and they got their hand out all the uh, time and but all of a sudden they did everything they said they would do yeah i can respect a person that stands up for what he believes, even if I don't believe in it. Yeah. And uh, th- that's what Independence Day is all about. A few people that decide they had enough. Yep. And uh, so I'll salute the flag, not the queen, and be happy about it. Amen. Amen. And uh, do that. Hey, but, uh, there's the... Uh, the uh, they're playing our song. Yeah, the orchestra has fired up That's this right. Morning. Well, we'll twirl around here and head out to something else. Sounds and, like uh, a plan. I'm going to go find, get my coconut cake. I'm going to eat me a barbecue sandwich. I'm going to salute the flag. And I'm going to talk ugly about that Olympic person that don't want to do that. <laughs> there you go. All day long. And I hope she trips and falls flat on her noggin. So. Yes, and all that, and then dare anybody to tell me I can't. That's right. There you that, go. And that's what freedom's all about. Amen, but brother. Stand up for it. Have a good weekend, uh, guys. You See too. you later. Thank you.